mm -hmm. and we sealed it in plastic. Oh yeah. So that 50 years from now, yeah. you know, yeah. this is this is history. I mean, yeah. this is something that we're going to remember. So I said, yeah, this is like 250 cents. <laughs> Just so you get a message, can you? I'm going to look at them and read myself okay. and then Cats. And seal them. <laughs> We have hundreds of newspapers, even back in the 20s, and, yeah, and yeah. you know, the, what, the 36? I mean, good Lord, we got loads of them. I love looking at the advertisements. Those are, yeah. those are always fun. Yeah. The cost of things. Oh yeah, God. that's the other so thing. So different. I know. New more board for $800. I know. Yeah, that's cool. Matt, are we going to have some commissioners at this commissioner meeting? Yeah, you know. Yeah, is it optional? Yeah. <laughs> we got two minutes. Yeah, I know this. <laughs> I know they're in chambers, so. It's Good to see you. Good to have a commissioner. Is that what you <laughs> I just registered that now. It takes me a while. Hi, welcome back. Thank you. How are you no. feeling? You look good. A hundred million times <laughs> better than I was, so. Yeah. Yeah, good. Focus on my health and yeah. I feel much better. I mean, first Because I'm right here. 
Father, as we gather today, we praise you for this day and your purpose for it. We pray that when we what we have prepared, that you bless it and multiply our efforts as only you can. You've richly blessed our valley. And we remember 50 years ago, the catastrophic flood of Agnes. In its aftermath, we saw our neighbors and communities come together to rebuild their homes and businesses. That goodness and love is still evident throughout our valley. We ask you for your guidance so we walk fully in the way that provides your blessings and goodness. Establish the work that you have at our hands performed and bring us to decisions and outcomes that are in accordance with your will. We ask you to keep us alert in a dark world that thrives on hate, dissension, and conflict. May we rise above with unity, peace, and love so that our value thrives in your goodness. Let your peace rain down upon us as we seek you first. Seek you first and all that we do. These things we humbly pray in your name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Good morning. We'll convene the commissioner's public meeting at this time and ask for the approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. I'll move to approve. I second. All in favor say aye. 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 So carried. Public comment on agenda items only at this time. Do we have anybody from the public that have any comments? Hearing none, we'll move on. And um, we're honored today to have. Uh, Billy Dayton from uh, Fire Tree Place here to present uh, what they do for our community. So Billy, please come up and, yep, wrap the podium there, please. Thank you again for being here. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate the, the opportunity to be in front of everyone here and explain a little bit about what uh, Fire Tree Place does. Um, for those of you that don't know, Fire Tree Place is located uh, 600 Campbell Street. Um, Fire Tree Place opened uh, in 2014, um, is when Fire Tree Place opened its doors, November of 2014. Um, since then, uh, we've continued to grow over the years and adding more programs for the community and the youth. Fire Tree Place is a nonprofit community center uh, focusing on youth development programs specifically. Of our programming, we have uh, three programs that are licensed child care programs. Those include summer camp, before school, and after school clubs. Our summer camp is a 10-week program which offers fun recreational activities, art and craft activities for the youth, um, field trips twice per week, and that's going on currently, and actually today the kids are going on field trips, uh, Discovery Space Museum, and I think they're going to one of the local state parks as well. So um, so currently that's going on uh, during the summertime here. Along with those field trips, uh, they are fed meals twice a day. They get breakfast, lunch, as well as a snack. Um, and again, as I specified before, it's a 10-week program, so we'll end around August uh, 19th this year. Um, our before school care program obviously runs during the school year. Um, that program is really there for the parents of the youth that need additional supervision of their children so that way that they can get to work if they need to get to work before um, the school bus arrives to pick up their kids or before they're able to you know drop them off at school. In our before school care we offer them brec uh, breakfast as well as transporting them to the local Williamsport School District schools. Um, our after school club, uh, again, obviously runs during the school year. That is where we pick up the children from local school districts in Williamsport, South Williamsport, Montoursville, and Loyal Sock. Um, 
When they arrive at Fire Tree Place, they receive dinner, and when they leave the program, uh, they also get a snack on their way out. So our, our premise in, in all of our programming, along with, with uh, fun and enrichment activities, is making sure that the kids are never hungry. Um, along with the, the dinner, they participate in recreation activities, homework time, uh, the opportunity to participate in tutoring services, uh, as well as in our lesson plan time. And our lesson plan time consists of our group leaders uh, developing soft and life skill activities and incorporating them into uh, each day of the week. Uh, part of our core uh, thought process for after school programming is to not just warehouse children, um, but to develop the, the kids that, that come through the doors and make sure that every day they're growing, uh, especially in these soft and life skill areas. Um, within these programs that I just mentioned, there's, I, I want to uh, point out one staff member uh, that has been a great asset uh, to our organization since arriving in the summer of 2021 and his name is Smudge and he is our facility dog. Um, since his arrival uh, we have seen a, a great change in, in the, the youth that we serve uh, in terms of their maturity level and, and handling of uh, a dog um, and it's quite interesting to, to see how they interact with Smudge on a daily basis. Um, and he's there to provide comfort for the kids as well as provide the experience of how to uh, properly treat you know, animals and care for animals as well. So I just wanted to point out Smudge. Um, along with our child care programming, we also offer uh, tutoring services for the community, food assistance programs, rental space for community members, as well as recreation activities. Uh, Fire Tree Place offers, we just started offering tutoring services uh, during the school year for first graders up to high school age students. Um, we primarily focus our tutoring efforts on language arts and mostly mathematics uh, for the primary school age children and only mathematics for the older age teens at the current time. We are in the process of expanding our tutoring services, uh, so we hope to be able to offer more in the future. One of our largest food assistance programs is our Fresh Express Food Giveaway. Um, this is a partnership with the Central Pennsylvania Food Bank, um, which other organizations also do as well throughout the community. Um, and this takes place Fridays at, at Fire Tree Place. We utilize our drive-through system um, to help load up the community members with food that is dropped off by the Central Pennsylvania Food Bank. We normally average uh, about 120 households um, every Friday, um, so it is quite a large uh, effort, um, and that runs from 12 p.m., and we normally end whenever we get through all 120 people, but that's normally around uh, 2, 3 o'clock is when that normally ends. Along with the Fresh Express program, we also do uh, events like spaghetti dinners, um, uh, community dinners and baking contests as well for the community members. Fire Street Place also rents out the space, especially our common area and our gymnasium. Uh, we try to rent those spaces out at reasonable prices for the community in order to be able to hold whatever event they see uh, fit that they would like to, to host that maybe Fire Street Place does not do. So. Our recreation activities uh, include open gyms for basketball, pickleball, and volleyball. Um, we have youth and adult flag football leagues. We have youth soccer programs, uh, along with uh, many other youth and adult leagues. One of our bigger programs uh, that we operate is the Williamsport Youth Football and Cheer Program uh, that participates in the Heartland Youth Football League. Uh, this year we currently have just a little bit below 200 kids participating in the um, Youth Football and Cheer Program. Along with our recreation programming, Fire Shoe Place operates and maintains Flanagan Park and the basketball courts that were donated by Alizé Johnson uh, that are located on Fire Shoe Place property. Um, the park and the courts are open for the community to utilize daily. Um, all the activities that I have mentioned are our core programming, though there are, are several other programs that kind of are um, hit and miss that we do, you know, once every year that uh, um, 
we try to serve the community with. Um, but these services are operated by 11 full-time staff members, five part-time members, um, a group of dedicated volunteers, as well as Smudge. Um, and I don't want to take up any more time of the, the meeting here. I could continue to stand here and talk about Piracy Place for the next hour. Um, but again, I'd like to thank uh, the commissioners for having me um, and the opportunity just to explain a little bit about what Fire Chief Place does. And um, thank you for all the, the, the uh, organizations and donors and the County of Lycoming and the City of Williamsport for their support over the years. Uh, and we continue to look to grow and add more programming for the, for the community. So thank you. Thank you. We want to thank you and your staff and, and Smudge. What a great name. Yes. <laughs> so let me just ask you a question. At the beginning, you said something that's very important. It's a licensed child care facility. Yes. Correct? And that's licensed by the Commonwealth yes. of Pennsylvania. That is correct. Yes. The three, three of our core programs, the summer camp, the before school, and the after school, are licensed child care programs. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. So they're coming in and they're having certain standards in terms of how many kids you have to have per... Yes. staff and other kinds of yes we follow ratios specified by by the state of pennsylvania Common and then pennsylvania. also um you mentioned renting space you rent space to the head start program for step right we do yes we do have a head start uh classroom um currently um, obviously it's summer so they're they're taking their break um but they they will be back in fire tree place come the, the school year here yeah for full exposure i'm on the board of fire tree but i think it's important to sort of bring these things out because they're and, and of course, I know I happen to be on the board of Penn State Extension, and I know that they do the dining with diabetes there, right? Yep. So they're engaging the community in how to fight diabetes by having good health. Yes, yes. Yeah, we, we I mean, we partner with a lot of local organizations. Uh, um, as you mentioned, uh, that's one of them, along with uh, West Branch Drug and Alcohol and um, uh, River Valley Health and Dental, um, where we bring in uh, different organizations. Uh, to to present and, and work with the kids that we serve as well as uh, community members involved so right. a holistic approach to trying to change families yeah. yes right and so the last thing is um, you mentioned about Flanagan Park and it wasn't until you mentioned it that it, uh, I used to live there on fourth and of course we remember that there was a shooting death about 10 years ago and one of the greatest things I think about what's happened uh, since 2014 with with uh, that building and with fire tree is that it's anchored the neighborhood between uh, Alizé Johnson's tremendous contribution with the park, but also with uh, with the basketball courts, but with the fire tree sort of maintaining Flanagan Park in a way that, uh, because back in the day when you went down to play there, you had to pick up hypodermic needles, because I know we lived three blocks away and we would go to play and, and it was before you could send a, a four-year-old on to the playground, you had to make sure there were no hypodermic needles and other things. And that's really been an anchor, which is a great thing. So thank you for that. And Billy, you work incredibly hard and uh, and we, it's really been an asset having you there. We appreciate it. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, so. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Okay, moving on to reports. Brandy, the uh, cash requirements report. Billy, you're welcome to stay, or I know you're very busy. If you want to leave, feel free to. Okay. Again, thank you for being Most here. Most people stay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but please thank your staff and the volunteers for what they do. It's a tremendous asset in the community, and uh, and it's definitely an anchor of that neighborhood and that whole area. And the board really has been very supportive. The board of commissioners and and we've recognized what you guys did. So. Thank you. Okay, Brandy. Okay. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, presented for your ratification are the invoices due through. June 29th, 2022, that were paid yesterday, 622-2022, in the amount of $596,221.70. And that varies by a little under $2,000 from the original report you received. One extra check for Kepner Farm Supply for supplies for the farm pulled in on their report when they ran the check run that didn't pull in on mine for some weird reason so there's a little bit of a difference there of that uh, the new total five hundred ninety six thousand two hundred and twenty one dollars and seventy cents thank you yep of that amount three hundred and seventy eight thousand seven hundred and eighteen dollars and fifty three cents or approximately sixty four percent were general funds 
Grants and other sources amounted to $129,340.74, or approximately 22%. RMS, their invoices this week were $42,830.21, or approximately 7%. And about another 7% were escrow funds uh, for $45,332.22. Uh, questions? Yeah, I did have a question. <coughs> I asked the uh, coroner to come down, Chuck Keesling. Uh, there was one of the cash requirements, I'm not sure what page it was, but uh, forensic. Pathology Associates. Pathology. There was an autopsy or something. So if, if Chuck would like to come up and explain the charge and what's all included in that. Okay. Um, these charges, uh, yes, they're higher than what we normally see. However, these were infant deaths. Um, these, tragically, one was in January, one was in February of this year. Um, these cases are very complex. They take a tremendous amount of time on my staff's part, and we have to leave nothing unturned with these investigations. So the pathologists do the same thing. And so those, as you'll see in the breakdown on these invoices, there's additional testing that gets done to be able to, you know, can try to figure out why these babies are dead. We owe that to our families to be able to say this is what happened. Um, unfortunately, the one case, even despite all of the work that we did, the cause of death was still undetermined. I can't help that. You know, um, there's only one person, and that's the God above, that says it's time, and we have to deal with those cases. Um, so, unfortunately, this is why one of the things, this is a small part of the, those investigations. We spend countless hours up and down the interstate for these autopsies to be done in Allentown. Um, it's not, folks see like the coroner's offices and they think it's like CSI on TV. You'll notice these invoices just came through six months after, five months after the death occurred. Because um, all the testing takes that long to get all that stuff done. We're still doing work on these cases even today. Um, that's why for 10 years I've been saying we need a facility here. We need, I have ongoing discussions with Geisinger and Scott Lynn, the Montour County Coroner, about recruiting a forensic pathologist. We spend, it's, it's a tank of fuel every time we run a truck down there. It's personnel time, it's law enforcement time because they're traveling down for these autopsies. And, and it's, you know, it's just part of what we have to do. I don't have a choice, I can't bargain shop for forensic pathologists. There's only about 400 in the country. So it's very difficult to be able to recruit those. However, I do have Geisinger conversations. They would like to. They're a level one trauma center. UPMC is a you know, trauma center. So there's those cases, many of those need to be autopsy. Um, and it would be nice if we had that resource here in Lycoming County versus traveling up and down the interstate. Um, you know, as I've said before, my staff, myself, we're being exposed you know, through when everyone else, you know, a lot of departments were shut down, my office has been going nonstop it's through this whole COVID thing. We just have another drug death probably this year that we're dealing with now. And we've got white powder, meth, fentanyl, you know, we're handling this stuff. And again, we're taking stuff home to launder stuff in our home laundry, potentially exposing our family members to the same substance that killed someone and we don't have the resources to be able to decontaminate vehicles and decontaminate our personnel safely. So um, I understand the questions about the, and I kind of got off track, but I thought this is, again, I think the public needs to understand this. And you know, we've talked about it, we need to get this building project moving. Um, it's not getting, our office is on track to have another record year We've been dealing with over 700 cases in the last two years. Um, we're on track over 300 so far this year, so we're gonna be back at the same kind of numbers with or without COVID. Um, and unfortunately, these are tragic situations that we have to deal with and I can't, you know, there's no way I can cut corners. We could save a lot of money if we had a facility here, so we're not trucking up and down the interstate. But that's been a request for 10 years that 
nothing's happened. So, and with 40 million plus mm -hmm. in ARPA funding and COVID, uh, or the ARPA funding and Act 13 funding, I think now's the time we've got to move forward with this project. So, so have, I'll, has any other county, you know, surrounding county, uh, if you put a, a forensic office up here, how many counties do you believe that? 11 counties were f in that feasibility study. This is the pile of letters of support from coroners, from chief administrators, from Pens Pennsylvania State Police, the police chiefs in our community. Um, and I'm sure if I went out to other police chiefs outside of Lycoming County, they would support this as well. Um, <clears throat> but the coroners all support it. They keep asking me, when are we getting a pathologist up here? because we constantly are moving bodies to and from Allentown to do necessary duties that we have to do. Um, and we haven't done an autopsy. Dr. Hill died in 2008. That was the last autopsy that was done at Williamsport Hospital. And the facility is not anywhere near capable of handling volumes of autopsies. There's one table. The cooler was filled to capacity in December of 2020 with the, the COVID deaths. Um, and it's it's been hit and miss on weekends. We're still running pretty high volumes through there. Would any other county or uh, entity such as UPMC or Geisinger contribute to funding? I have not asked Geisinger, but I think if Geisinger gets us a forensic pathologist and is willing to take on that part of it, that's a huge expense because that salary is going to be somewhere probably in the 250 to four hundred thousand dollar a year range so, so are I you saying that Geisinger would there they, there's they been would talks we've the, had discussions okay. with them about they've been trying to to look and see if they can't recruit a forensic pathologist that could possibly service up us here in Lycoming County and they have facilities down there but they are pretty well maxed out they're they're tight with the volumes of you know the deceased that they bring into Geisinger Medical Center they don't have the resources and physical capacity to be able to take on 10 or 11 other counties. So we really need the facilities both places. If they can recruit the pathologist, you know, and we can provide the building for them to do the work in, um, we're, we're in that, you know, step in that direction. So. The facility that you take them down to for the autopsies in Allentown. Now in town, that's town. Yeah, for us, how, yeah. How large is that? What size building is that? Well, it's at the basement of the burn center down in Allentown. So it's their trauma and burn center at Lehigh Valley Hospital, Cedar Crest. So it's in the basement of that facility there. Um, square footage, they have three autopsy rooms, um, office space for the pathologist, storage, you know, they have a walk-in cooler that's probably the size of this room um, because of the volumes that in and out of there because of them being a trauma center or burn center um, and so it's it's a you know it's a large facility but it's in the basement of their you know their operation down there chuck when we were down in washington um we met um over lunch with, with congressman user he wanted to know uh, you know if he's elected in this area what what our top three priorities were and uh, we share with him the levy um we shared with from the airport, and we shared with him your office. And he said there was a, there's a very similar situation down in Schuylkill County that they're experiencing with their coroner's mm -hmm. office, which is where his home base is. Um, you know, he, he was 100% behind this project. We then went over and spoke with Senator Casey's office, spoke to his chief of staff, and they put in a, a million dollar earmark for uh, equipment mm -hmm. towards this building. So. Um, you know, as we move closer and closer, we have people that are coming to, to join the team mm -hmm. to try to make this a reality. Well, and as you know, I spent five years through this whole COVID pandemic as president of the state association. And the coroners across Pennsylvania, I mean, I'm fortunate, and I thank all of you for, you know, helping do things that we've done over the last 22 years that I've been in office. Um, we're better in many counties than, than many of the counties with resources that we have. Um, but it's only been because we've been, you know, plugging along and showing the need and, and identifying where we can save money, where we can generate revenue to be able to do things. So we're able to bring in some revenues that we weren't originally able to do. Um, the coroners across the state, though, are generally 
you look at the budgets, you see the numbers, we're providing a 24-7, 365 operation with myself and four staff. And that's, that's large compared to some other counties. They have a coroner and maybe a chief deputy coroner. They don't have office space. They're operating out of funeral homes. They're operating out of wherever. So there's, the coroners across the state are so underfunded for their needs. And I hear this from many of the coroners um, that have not even been able to get the resources that we have like locally. So I applaud you know, where we're at, but we still have a big, a huge step that needs to be. If you look at Pennsylvania, North Central PA is the only part of the state that does not have forensic pathology services. You have them in the Northeast, you have them in the Northwest, you have them all across the South. With Pittsburgh, Allegheny, Westmoreland, you've got Philadelphia, you've got the central part of Dolphin County, they have pathologists down in that area. We have nothing up here and it's, it's desperately needed. I mean, with the drug deaths, the baby deaths, traumatic deaths, homicides, all those cases need to be autopsied, and, and it would be much, huge savings if we could do it locally versus the road trips to and from Allentown. So, <coughs> we just had it over that yesterday, day before? Uh, Monday morning, yeah, yeah. We just got the talks back and on. So that's an ongoing investigation. May require an autopsy. I'm going back up to have further discussions on that case. Okay. So, Thanks, Jeff. Thank all right. So hopefully Thanks, we Jeff. can keep moving. That you know, explains we, your questions. We are. And where we we're are. At, so we're definitely gonna. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? I have a motion. I'll move to approve. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 So Thank great. you. Thank you. Nice to have you back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Feel much better. Okay, 2.2, .2, Maya, uh, list of contracts. Good morning. So for the public, the Director of Administration, Ms. McDermott has authority to sign contracts under $10,000 to keep things moving. And once a month, Ms. Toon gives us these for approval. Legal representation, inspect a fire system, appraisal, camera system, cleaning services, and a renewal of a uh, app space at RMS. <coughs> you have a motion? I'll move to approve. I'll say. Any further questions or comments? Okay. Not all on their side. Aye. 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 So carry. Thank you, Maya. Thank you. All right, moving on to info items, 3.1. Uh, Jason Fink. Morning, Jason. We'll talk about Lerda. Morning. Good morning. I believe you all have uh, a draft of an ordinance uh, for a request of Lerda associated with a uh, project w involving West Pharmaceuticals and Jersey Shore. Uh, Lerda, as you all are aware, uh, only affects development uh, taxes associated with new development. It does not affect the current taxes that they would be paying. Um, and it would be uh, staged. Uh, what is being proposed right now is a seven-year Lerda, uh, which is very similar to what Williamsport has right now in place. Uh, where they would uh, have on their new addition um, full abatement on that new addition for uh, the first two years and then graduate it up uh, by 25% uh, each two years with the final year being at uh, 25%. Um, and then it would be fully taxable uh, following that with the new addition. All current taxes would continue to be paid at the levels that they are right now or at any future levels if there were to be tax increases or decreases uh, that would come into play. So um, West is uh, right now uh, considering uh, a project that would employ somewhere uh, between uh, 125 to 150 people. Uh, they are looking to make a decision on this uh, here next month. Uh, they're looking at uh, 
the Jersey Shore plant in addition to uh, Kinston, North Carolina. Uh, we anticipate, uh, in addition to that, an investment of somewhere between 65 to $70 million uh, for the project. Uh, and uh, these would all be family sustaining wages. Uh, a fair number of them would also involve some technical expertise uh, as well with what they're looking at. Um, West has been very impressed with our market uh, as evidenced yesterday with the announcement, uh, or actually the starting of their project here in Williamsport. Uh, we understand in talking to them that LERDA is something that they would uh, be uh, they would find helpful for them to be able to make the project work if they were to select it here. Um, the governor's action team has already uh, been engaged and it has presented to them uh, their offer uh, to be able to get the project here in Pennsylvania. Uh, and at this point in time, we're in the process right now, you may have seen, uh, we've already been uh, to both uh, other taxing bodies, the LERDA just as everybody would know, the, it involves all three of the local taxing bodies that are involved with the property uh, tax. The school board, uh, we presented to them, as well as the Jersey Shore Borough, uh, just about a week and a half ago. Um, the school district is scheduled to vote here next week. I believe it's on Monday and July 11th when, is when the borough would be voting uh, on their ordinance. So. We want to thank them for that nice program yesterday that we attended uh, in, in Williamsport. And uh, it was interesting, the, the, the um, one gentleman is obviously from Britain, had a British accent, the other one sounds like he's from Scotland, Ireland. Ireland, Scotland. Ireland, Ireland, Ireland yeah. yeah. Ireland, so, Irish. it definitely Scotland, wasn't yeah. Southeastern PA. Right, yeah. it definitely, so we, we're becoming a multinational uh, community here. I wondered how they got in. Did they, where did they fly? To? <laughs> uh, that's, that's, that's a nerd topic. Yeah. <laughs> but we're working on that. We're working yes. on that. We don't take it lightly because the ability of getting a company like West that has plants all over the world to come and can expand in an area like ours depends on having an airport where yeah. they can get uh, people in and out in one day and not have to spend three days traveling to Williamsport. So we, we're going to work on that at the federal and state level. And, um, so uh, hopefully, now they don't need the support of all three, but it is, it is right? We can they, need, they, they, need, they need the support of two of the three taxing two of the bodies. Three tax Correct. Bodies. Okay. Yeah. okay. And this is separate from the 150 jobs that they're putting into the plant in Williamsport. Uh, well, actually, the Williamsport, the one that was announced yesterday, that project involved Jersey Shore already. There were 100, about 120, 100 to 120 jobs that they had committed to hiring last year when this was project was announced last August. They were already in the process of hiring those people in Jersey Shore. So Williamsport, they're anticipating somewhere between 30 to 50 new jobs just at that plant. Oh, got it. Okay, yeah. so it's 125 to 150 between the two plants. Right. Yeah, well, it's obviously still a significant number of jobs. Yes. Yep, and then this next project would be another 125 to another 150 jobs. Yeah. So potential okay. for up to 300 between the two plants. Right. Is it 300 between the two plants? That's what I'm trying to understand. Or is it, it would be somewhere between 250 to 300. Oh, 250. If we okay. get this one, it would be somewhere between 250 to 300. Correct. Between the two plants. Right. You know, I was impressed with yesterday was, you know, I, I stayed in the back with the, some of the employees that I knew and uh, how they really respect uh, the management there in the yeah. West. And uh, you can tell when they talk about teamwork, it, it is a team. And uh, so it's not a surprise that they're, they're growing astronomically. But uh, the one thing that I did catch, and I've seen this not just with uh, West, uh, is the admiration they had for you oh. and, and the chamber. And when you think about the Chamber of Commerce, you think uh, it's it's an, uh, uh, an organization that tries to bring in jobs, you know. But I don't think anybody has a clue as to how much you have to know, okay? From power, energy, okay? Um, water. Water, personnel. And, and it, it kind of like, it's, it's, it's a branch of like our planning. I mean, our planning department gets involved in so many different aspects of economic development 
and here, you know, and that's who I always gave the credit to because they, you got to do a lot of research. Uh, so these jobs, they come in, but at a cost. And um, it was pretty impressive of, especially the, I think he was the CEO of the company saying that, you know, one of the biggest reasons was the relationship he had with you. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we can't thank you enough for the energy and the effort that you put into that, that position. Uh, and I hope yeah, you, you stick around for a while. Yeah. Stay off the bikes. <laughs> <laughs> my wife doesn't want me to ride my bike outside anymore. <laughs> the statement was you won't find a hurt of working chamber, head of chamber. Right, well. Yeah. So and we, we want to thank you for your hard work. And we want to thank the uh, West Pharmaceutical for their investment. And commitment to our community uh, because they are growing and they do ex extremely important work and they shared that with us yesterday yeah. uh, life-saving and life-enhancing um, work that they do within their their plants it, it is definitely a good quality uh, company that we have in our market uh, that are uh, as noted uh, by Tony um, the the employees feel a team there and and that's you know from talk and we work a lot with the, all the companies but have an opportunity to work with them uh over the years as well and it's evidenced by being able to walk in there we we've been able to take schools through their superintendents uh career tech ed educators through there and every time it's you know just a really vibrant place and and i think it's because they have a purpose as well, and, and they understand what that purpose is, um, because what they do does you know, contribute to others' lives. So, and, and I do have to note, you know, while we may not work on projects all the time together because of the nature of certain projects, we do have a great working relationship with their planning department. Um, whenever we need to reach out to them to pull them into stuff, they've been a great partner with us. So, you know, and things don't happen just through efforts of one, it, it's the, the whole team, so. Yeah. So on the blurt of, it abates the property taxes for seven years. But on the new development. development. On the new development. On the new development. So in year, um, when does the LERTA begin? Does it begin after completion of the project? It, it, yes, they, they, they would, it would begin after completion of the project when the, prop, when the property is assessed for okay. the new addition, yeah. So, and then for seven years, so the first two years, year one and two, they'll pay 25%. The first two years, they pay nothing on that first two years. Okay. Oh, I thought they paid 20. Okay. Year three and four, they're doing 25%. 25% in, in, for both years. Correct. Then five and six, 25%. Then it's, uh, no, it steps up to 50%. Okay, that's where, so yeah. it's 50, and then the last year is 20. It's 75. It's 70, oh, yeah. gotcha, yep. 75, right. And then, okay. And then it's fully assessed after that. Fully assessed. So it's actually the assessed value that is the taxable uh, body, a taxable value. Correct. Okay, so let's say it's assessed at $2 million. In year one and two, there, there's no tax. Correct. In year three and four, they pay 25% of the assessed value. 25% of the $2 million. Okay, yep. in year 50% and then year seven, 75. Okay. Yep. Okay. And then by year eight, they're in full 100%. And in year eight, it's fully on the tax rolls. Yep. Okay. And Commissioner, that's only on the improvement? Right. Right. Yep. Only on the improvement, right. Okay. All right. Well, are we going to we want to vote on this? You a motion? I'll move to approve it. No, 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 this is an information. Oh, I yeah, only yeah, oh, okay. we I believe you have yeah. to, as an ordinance, you have to have another. So, yeah. for the public, they may understand. Well, why are these guys so willing to approve this so quickly? Well, because the problem is that, um, you know, companies do look at other places, and unfortunately, until we have national legislation which sort of has a uniform taxing system, you have states competing with each other. You have. Uh, and it's always a fine line between racing to the bottom and trying to find. Lerta is actually one of the less uh, detrimental, I should say, tax. I mean, some of the other taxing. It's not uh, KOZ. It's not it's KOZ, not KOZ, KOZ so, commissioner. So we're still collecting. Uh, we're still collecting taxes in other ways and so okay. forth. Whereas, for example, the KOZ, they're not paying the earned income tax. They're not paying the sales tax. Right. They're not paying the state tax uh, or the local. This is a less, it's, it's kind of a, a compromise, but it does give us the ability to give them some uh, relief. Yeah. Tier system over here. 
right over seven years of yeah. and presumably it gives uh, an entity such as this business or any other business time to sort of get rolling with production and get up to full speed because it may, you know, obviously you open the doors, you're not hitting your 100% target you'd like to, but, so, okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Fung. We should you. have the ordinance for next week. So okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Well, you could certainly probably tell the other bodies if you wanted that we, I mean, we can't tell you how we would vote. No, but, but we, I, we I want to know you'll be voting next week then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because I will be meeting with the school board. Next week for right. Okay. Perfect. And I'll be here. Thank you. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. Actually, uh, Commissioner Metzger, this is uh, the solicitor. Yes. It has to be advertised for a minimum of seven days and a maximum of 60 days. So it probably won't be next week because my understanding is we won't have the seven days by the time we get this to the advertisement media, okay. so it's probably the week after. We can put it on for the week of the 7th or the 14th. Okay, I'll be, I'll be here. Okay, we'll let you know which week you put it on. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, solicitor. Yes, sir. Okay. Next informational item, 3.2. All right, Maya. Mm -hmm. um, this is just to acknowledge the county business testing proposal for Greater Williamsport Trail Systems Wayfinding Project. Um, we're looking for consulting service, um, consulting services for the design of a strategic uh, wayfinding system for better navigation of the Greater Williamsport Trail System. Okay. Any questions for Maya? Three point three. Thank you, Maya. Yep. And then my, the next item I have is that we will be rejecting all bids that we receive for the Williamsport Re Region Relief Well Rehabilitation and Replacement Project. It's our intention to rebid this sometime in September with help of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Okay, we have Shannon in the audience. Do you have any comments on that, Shannon? No? Okay. <laughs> I wanted to give you the opportunity. That's okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh-huh. Okay, actually, Okay, uh, 4.1 through 4.3, uh, Kristen McLaughlin, we're talking about amendments to subrecipient agreements for CDBJ. Good morning, Kristen. Good morning, Commissioners. Would you like me to go over all three of them? Yeah, please. Okay. Um, the first one is for the sub an amendment to the subrecipient agreement between the county and the borough of Muncie for the Muncie Library and Removal Architectural Barrier Project. This both increased the amount that they have available um, by $40,745.70. That is a result of a budget revision that we had done a few months ago and um, also extends the termination date of their contract. The second one is an, also an amendment to the recipient agreement, this one between the county and the Center for Independent Living for their rooftop air conditioning unit project. This also, this just uh, extends the termination date on that agreement. And the third one is another. Okay, excuse me one second. Sure. I'm mm -hmm. going to stop you for the first two. Okay. And we'll take a, a vote on the first two. Okay. And um, do we have any? Um, do we have a motion on actually 4.1, 4.2. I'll move to. I second. And any questions? No. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, 4.3 was not on the agenda originally. Oh, okay. So, uh, director. At the top there, it says additions. Actually, oh, no, I'm sorry, I missed that. Well, um, commissioners, seeking your approval to add uh, action item 4.3, vote to approve amendment to sub recipient agreement with Montoursville Borough uh, with 2017 CDBG orders. I'll move the approve the addition to the uh, agenda. A second. All in favor say aye. 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 So carried. Okay, Thank you. I apologize. I wasn't aware. Thank, Thank you. Uh, you. Commissioner, if you're going to have to allow public comment to the extent that, that there is any on the added agenda item. Okay. At this time, any public comment on action item 4.3? Well, I think he means we have to have a pr uh, public comment on adding it. Is that what you mean? Adding it? Yes. Okay. That's what you mean. Okay. Yeah, I'm asking for any public comment. Okay. No, sir, I'm, I, oh. it's not the comment on the adding, it's the comment on the added item, whether there is any public comment on it. Okay. Well, you haven't had a motion yet. No. You have a motion? Yes. I'll move to approve 4.3 amendment for Montoursville Borough. 
second that motion. All in favor say aye. Well, so we have public comment. Any, any, I'm sorry, public comment at this time. Okay, hearing none. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very okay, much. Okay, I think we got through that. <laughs> all right. So, let's, are we good? Sure. Okay, thank you. All right. All right. 4.4. Four. Uh, Commissioner seeking your approval uh, to the amendment number one to the engagement letter with Baker Tilly. Uh, this is to uh, add some services uh, to the letter of engagement, which is uh, traditionally for the yearly audit. To make some improvements in the office of budget funding. Okay, it's a 2022 budgeted item available. And uh, I have a motion. I'll move to approve. A second. Is there any comments or questions? No, I'm not sure this was budgeted, but we have it in our contingency. Yeah. It says available. Available. Oh, that's what you mean. Okay, okay. got it. Yeah. Right. This will help us. We've been really short-staffed in the Budget and Finance Office, and um, the combination of trying to uh, train new people and also, you know, these are complicated projects. So Baker Tilly will be able to help us. All favor say aye. 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 Security. Uh, 4.5 and 4.6, Maya. The first item I have for you is 4.5. It's good to approve agreement with what's connected. This is an approved um, budget item for the prison. This is to assist our uh, victim providing legal research and terminals for the prison and the police and access and support. Okay, can I have a motion? I move to approve. Uh, second. Call here, say aye. 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 Security. Uh, the next item I have for you is to, 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 um, to approve the bid for drainage work at White Deer Golf Course to extreme golf management. Um, we're awarding a portion of that project to them. Um, roughly, we're thinking it's going to be uh, about 77000 and it's the heritage and the vintage course area that they're going to be working on. Okay, and this comes out of their budget that they presented to us right. um, at the uh, initial uh, 2022 budget type talks with them. That, that's a significant point, that these are coming out of revenues from, from the, the golf, golf course. course. Not coming out of Not coming out of our general fund revenues. So that's a that's an improvement yeah. over time. Coming out, coming out of their revenue. Right. Yeah. Not the landfill revenue. Well, they say they contribute. That's important to point out. Right. No, it really is in all seriousness, because in, in the past we would have had to tap into um, property tax revenue, but this right. is actually revenue that they've earned. So yeah. that's good news. Okay, a motion? I'll move to approve. Second. All favor say aye. Aye. All right, 4.7, uh, Jerry Kennedy. Uh, support for now. Uh, morning, commissioners. Morning, uh, before you this morning, we have a maintenance renewal for our downtown uh, and Lysok uh, core network switches for the amount of twenty-seven thousand nine forty-seven and forty-four cents, it is a budgeted item. Okay, motion. I move to approve. A second. Any questions for Mr. Kennedy? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 So, Kerry, thank you, Jerry. Four point eight. Jason, you still on? Yes, sir. Amendment with uh, highway. Commissioners, 4.8 for your approval of amendment with, with the agreement that we have with highway equipment and supply. It is a, another, this will be the second amendment, number 21. This is a four-year agreement to begin with, but we're already in our second amendment. The shop rate, the overtime, field rate, pretty much everything went up around five to seven dollars. Uh, this is, uh, we only use highway for their service work at, on an ad needed basis. Uh, do need to keep the current streets as they are. Speaking here. Okay. I'll motion to approve. I'll move to approve. Second. Any additional comments? All in favor say aye. 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 All right. 4.9. 10. Agreement with Larson. 
Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. This is an agreement with um, Lorson Design um, to engineer the east parking lot or drive through area to Third Street Plaza um, to fit as much parking area in there as we can. We're looking at uh, 40, roughly 40. Re yeah, roughly 40. I think we kind of came out like 41, but um, when they're finished engineering, we'll have a, a solid number on that. Okay. And as we uh, build the wellness center and have more offices moving over into our Third Street Plaza, we'll need the additional parking over there. Uh, absolutely, well, yes. Hopefully it solves that problem for us. Great. Any additional comments, questions? A motion? I'll move to approve. Second. All in favor of side? Aye. 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 So carried. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. And 4.10, uh, South. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, this is a request uh, to approve a subscription to purchase uh, Streetlight uh, Insight data. So this is data that uh, we're able to collect through this purchase agreement. It's for a one-year subscription. Um, the cost is $20,000. We were working with uh, Streetlight. Uh, the original cost was somewhere around 35000 but they actually were able to put together a specific package, much like Comcast would do with your TV channels, to allow us to access uh, data for origin uh, destination, trip speed, travel time, commercial vehicle metrics, things of that nature. They used this uh, service in the CSVT study. Michael Baker did it for us. This gives us the opportunity to do that ourselves. Um, Scott Williams will be able to use this for the LRDP update that's going on and other um, transit, or sorry, transportation planning activities. Okay, great. Have a motion? I'll move to approve. I'll second. On their side. Aye. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, Commissioner's comments? Yeah, I have a couple. Um, you know, as we're, we're talking to constituents and, and about all their issues, and, and, and there are many, from inflation to the gas and the work called in this and that. And, and I want everybody to understand, you know, I've been in business for 35 years. And uh, a two by four, we used to be able to pick up for $2.40. It's now $10.49. Okay, a, a 250 foot roll of uh, 12 two wire, right? Went for $27, it's now $167, okay? And what's, what's alarming, is it's alarming to me anyway is that we've never been so busy our carpet went up 35 percent just in selling right and and I, I i mean that just in a four-month period so when we see what's happening now it makes no sense to us what whatsoever it's it's actually scary and um when we see the people starting to tighten it up with the interest rates going up. Why, why I'm bringing this up is because people will stop spending. It, it's going to be inevitable. It's, it's going to be very difficult on them. And what, what is alarming to me as a, a county commissioner is that people will start to uh, lay off uh, people and they will stop their spending and they will ask for property tax reduction. And if you haven't noticed what's going on right now with uh, the appeals from the big box stores uh, and even more appeals from our, our business community and, and, and uh, retail, uh, office space, right? Times are changing and those buildings will be appealed and they will most likely win and all that loss of revenue is going to go back into the hands or on the shoulders of our residents this is alarming and we we need to take a, we need to have a plan um we better put it together as fast as we can uh, because I, I see this happening not only in the residential market, I mean commercial market, but the residential market as well. Um, 
That, that's one of the things. And when I read in the paper a couple of days ago about uh, legislators giving a tax forgiveness on, on, on the gas tax, okay, I think this is a terrible idea and for a number of reasons. But the most important is when I see um, to get the one the one can, uh, representative wanted to get it for the rest of the year, okay, and and they could draw down on revenue surpluses and federal relief money. So let me bring this back up because I've mentioned it a couple years ago that those surpluses in our state for the most part was kind of like federal spending. They had to borrow it. And then they touted, and, and this is this is a Republican legislature too, just so that you know back then, that borrowed this money only to tout during the election that they had surpluses. It's a lie. Our, our state is not that, it's not solid, okay? Um, and this is going to end up being a problem for us. We can no longer spend money we don't have. And, and I'll just conclude it like this. Um, Russia has the ruble, which was down to nothing. And they said they're going to start backing their money. And now it's up another, it's 25% higher. And our dollar is what's happening to our dollar. You know, I'm sure there are a lot of people, uh, and I think it was back in 1988, when when it was Black Monday, I'm trying to remember, but many retired people had to come out of retirement because they didn't have funds. And that was in October of 87. 87, that's, that's right, Don, October of 87, you're correct. Um, I'm fearful that with this inflation, the same will happen to our people, and and we just have to be on guard and and start start to plan for something that, uh, especially the uh, property tax appeals. So, okay. you know, on that note, we we really need to look at the assessment too, because the property tax assessment now is down. The common level ratio, I. I think 50, it was 54. 54. 54 so the inequity in how people are paying taxes is also going to bear on that. Yeah, but last, day, last year it was 59, now it's down to 54. Yeah. And if that, if people don't understand what that means, is that that's how much out of line what the real values of properties are um, in our in our county. That's substantial. Uh, Typically, you trigger reassessments at about, um, boy, I'm going back, I'd, I'd have to say 75%, uh, 80% uh, is when you start to look at the, those evaluations. And we're down to 54. Um, I'm not saying the timing's right, but there's going to be a lot of people that are hurting. Well, we know that even if we sign a contract tomorrow, it'll be... Right. Probably three years you know, before an assessment three years. goes into effect because we have to get in, in line to do it and then we have to have it done. And there's a backlog. So. If we did it now, it would be about 20, 20, 2026. 20, yeah. yeah. Any other comments? No, sure. yeah. okay. Any public comments? Sure. Ah, I was going to make reference to that. Yes, I am. I'm going to be a homer. <laughs> in the words of Charles Dickens, it's the best of times and the worst of times. So, uh, yes, I agree with uh, Commissioner Macera. These are dark times. But the uh, little town of Montgomery had history last Thursday yes, when their girls softball team won the first state championship in um, Montgomery history. Undefeated. And and they had an incredible year, uh, but it was honestly what I think is the most significant was the way the community responded. I mean, it was just, it meant 
I didn't follow a single game. I'll be honest with you. I didn't. I don't follow girls softball. It's not one of my things. But I was riding in a truck in the parade and celebrating with them. I mean, everybody in town was out on the streets. It was um, just a really a great moment. And I just, I just think again, we we uh, sports make a, a lot of difference. And we are so blessed here in Williamsport that we have this Little League World Series and. And I don't know, if you've ever traveled around, and you go around the country, and you mention Williamsport, everybody hears of it, but what's even most interesting to me is that, is that these people will always remember their years, the, the best times. Yeah, we were, we were uh, three games away from Williamsport, or two games away from Williamsport. That's how they measure success, how close they got to Williamsport. And so, I don't know, I just, I'm just uh, celebrating sports today and young people and and how it how it has a tendency and a, and a thing to bring people together um, that I don't think anything else really does because we're all in the same boat right now we're all just really just tightening our belts and just trying to get through and hope tomorrow's going to be better than today and out of nowhere comes a bunch of girls who just work together actually They've been a team for probably like the last 10 years, so they've known each other since they were small. And that's really the only way Montgomery, Jason Fink, he, I, I mentioned to him, he should have, uh, he has the last undefeated uh, high school football team that Montgomery ever had was back in the 90s. But those guys grew up together too. They all played the same thing. And that's again, the no cohesiveness of a small community, how even when you're small, if you just kind of get to know each other and work together and teamwork, uh, teaches you something so congratulations to to the folks in Montgomery but it, but to all the success that we've had over the years here and and you know you you guys are very good about recognizing these uh, well, these folks I'm so that's sure really with you, I reached out to Daphne Bowers and she has her uh, athletic director she's they're gonna contact us because oh, I want to bring them in to for the three of us to honor the team right. and we had mentioned them last year or last week we mentioned they were going out and playing uh, about the time we had a commissioner's meeting, and the uh, the news was fantastic. I agree with you. There's nothing that brings the community closer than Absolutely. watching our kids succeed. Mm -hmm. And I often, in my 20 years of coaching, I always told the kids, there's nothing better than hanging out with your friends growing up mm -hmm. and winning a championship with your name on your back and your hometown across the front. Yeah. yeah. And there's nothing better as a kid. And, uh, and a lot Absolutely. of these kids have that opportunity to do that, and it's something that will always have that they can never be taken from they'll be talking about it 50 years from now yes and I said to say that's why I bought a I, I did I bought a Sun Gazette I'm, I'm ashamed to say but I really did uh, <laughs> don't be next ashamed day, to say it. The next day, it's our hometown newspaper for the sake of putting it into plastic that I donated to the historical society that you're right 50 years from now this is history this is we're pulling out all those yeah. uh, you know ones from 72 from the flood mm -hmm. Uh, 50 years from now, those old gals will get together and regale each other with stories yep. of what happened in, in June of 2022. So, well, thank you. I, I love to follow the, I uh, know, I like to go see the, the fast pitch girls play. Ah, uh, you do. Uh, and what's incredible is they're good. <laughs> I mean, the, they are good. They uh, play as well as any boys and men's teams. They are excellent athletes, and so if you if you let uh, the women uh, dictate whether you're you know, because they're women playing, mm -hmm. you should watch them play mm -hmm. because they're just they're just awesome to watch. Well, this yeah. must be a good team. Yes, well, it is. <laughs> you don't get there without being yeah. a good team. So look forward to a future commissioners meeting, having them here, celebrating on their accomplishments. Oh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Morning, Tom. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Tom Adams from Williamsport. Uh, thank you for. Oops. Oh, well. <laughs> you lost your nose. Yeah, well, it's not a big deal. Uh, well, I like mentioned Fire Tree. It is a good organization. My granddaughters uh, would go there. And they had they were going home school, but Fire Tree did offer. I guess maybe they still do some uh, economic courses or some things. They would do some uh, arts and crafts or something like that during the day in the school year. It's a really good organization. Uh, 
and then uh, at the airport, I missed that meeting, so that is pretty important. Uh, hopefully, that uh, if something comes along with that, is there any, any more movement? Any thing coming with that, or difficult? It's difficult, yeah. and especially now with the shortage of pilots across the nation, uh, it's yeah. having a, a even more of an impact. Yeah, that's right. Um, Part of the problem, Tom, is that there's, I, I've come to realize that there's a real power imbalance between the ability of an airport authority in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, and a uh, multinational airline to affect pressuring them to do something like fly here. Right. So I really believe that we have to get federal and state elected officials on board to find ways to say to the airlines, look, um, especially, we saw this during the pandemic, if you're going to get millions and millions of dollars in uh, subsidies from the government, then you have to be willing to serve all the parts of our country. Um, even parts that may not be profitable. And Some people might say, well, why should you ask a business to serve a place that's not profitable? Well, if they're going to take a uh, handout from the government, then they need to be able to serve serve the people, or else we won't be served. I mean, small airports like ours. Even yeah. the major airlines like American just pulled out of three major airports. Yeah, and it's, it's so it's it's a big uphill battle, but we're we'll keep m pushing it because we understand it's vital to the economic development of the region. Yes. Yes, because like when uh, you're dealing with transportation, and you have the ability to fly. Um, I think there is some obligation on on that industry to provide in areas where where it's actually feasible. They should do it, just for the sake and the for the safety of for the good of the country overall. And because uh, I know my buddy who was out in Arkansas over the winter, and um, there was a, another just like our regional airport shut down because um, that, this was outside of Little Rock. Maybe f so now people have to drive another 50 miles to use the aer airplane, you know, if they need to fly in or out. And because we have such a uh, the ability of mobility, you know, we need to use it. And if I think I think you do have a good point, though. You know, that there should be some pressure on the legislatures to do something with this to get it up. Another issue, though, is is they're getting drawn our our uh, rural pilots you know and your smaller airports mm -hmm. those pilots are in demand and so they're being drawn away from us yeah. and, and to serve in major metropolitan areas and you know at a, a rate of a 125 150 thousand versus 40 to 60 thousand yeah. dollars a year so it put a shortage of pilots in there as well what was encouraging though was the fact that they said there there are enough students out there in you know, being trained, mm -hmm. uh, so to hopefully meet a demand. Yeah. Well, I want to mention something about the vaccines when it comes to pilots. Uh, I don't know how many people keep up on that, but um, with the COVID shots, apparently higher altitudes. And with the problems with the spike proteins, get in cause mitochondrial problems in the heart and and blood clotting. And getting these higher altitudes, that can cause more problems. If you're pilots, and you have those shots, you have a better chance, a higher risk of developing a problem. You're not going to be able to fly again. Um, that's just a fact. You're not going to hear a lot of stuff in the major media because they don't. And I know we have West Farmers. And we need, I think, pharmacies, pharmaceuticals are important, but when they uh, sign their contracts with the government and they work together in collusion and they have their big pharma, they support, uh, I guess, FDA, over 44% of their budget. You know, so pretty much a conflict of interest there. So it's, it's, it's pretty damaging, but then, like I said, a place like West Farmers, we need, you know, hopefully you never get in a situation where you have to have something to help you survive, you know, an emergency or something, but they're, uh, they do serve a purpose. You know, just need to, need to have some uh, real um, 
morality to them, I think. You know, and this all comes down to that, doesn't it? You know, an immoral society will, will reap a lot of problems. I did get over to the Juneteenth celebration. It was, a, it was a pretty neat. It's, it's good to see that. Um, I guess uh, one thing one speaker said it took him took people two and a half years after Lincoln, you know, had the Emancipation Proclamation for the news to get down to Texas. Well, it wouldn't hold water unless we won the war. The war had to be won for that to take effect. You know, it's just so. So they didn't find out until it was about, I guess, two, three months later after the war was finally finished. But, uh, but that was a great time, I'm sure, you know, for people. And I, I think it's pretty neat how that did started. They started celebrating that right away, this church in town there, and then they held on to it. That's, that's pretty good. Um, but uh, I did have a concern with this... Uh, I guess call it catch and release center or whatever being built over on Reach Road. Um, is that is that something for illegal immigrants that they're going to be using for? Or is that's that's not a catch and release. That's a uh, that's a, it's a center. It's more office space than anything. Uh -huh. They're remodeling it. Uh, when it's done, they, they say we're welcome to come up to it. There's there's to be two holding cells in there, and what they do is they put them in there. It's a place that can't be they can't be kept there more than 12 hours. Right. Because there's no, there's not a facility for housing. It's a facility it's for temporary detention. Then they move into a, a, a facility such as Clayton County. They have a contract with Clayton County, uh -huh. and then the immigration judge will make a determination where they go from there. Yeah. But it's more they when they they use Allenwood right now, uh -huh. and they have to book weeks ahead just to get their border room. Yeah. They have no space. Yeah. And so they they need that's more or less administration. Space is what they when we went over to Allenwood and met with them last fall. That's what they told us, and they said when they finished, they don't invite us up there. Look, so yeah. So how do how do we deal with people that are you know, I you know you don't have any prejudice you know with people like coming in, but how do you deal with, with people? How do you find out if they're criminal or if they're you know? Well, that's what that's what ICE's role is. If yeah. You, if you know of anything, and then report to ICE, the local ICE. And they'll investigate it. Yeah. Um, you know, um, obviously the administration has this current administration has a different take on it, <laughs> yeah. and uh, so we have to go by what what the laws are, and mm -hmm. uh, but we'll definitely check in everything. Yeah. You know, yeah. we welcome anyone who wants to be here, who is legal and law abiding and wants to work and, and, and take care of their families and do the right thing. Right. Right. Yeah. It's a see. Uh, there's organizations that think the nuclear family is a bad thing. When I first heard the term nuclear family, I thought, I never, I didn't know what that was. Because I'm thinking, well, you know, is it having to do with the atomic age or what? You know, is there some, like a different blend of a family? But no, it's the nucleus of a family is the father and mother and the kids and the people. There's organizations that want to destroy that. They think it's, they think it's just wonderful that you don't have a father around or a mother or communities raising the kids without, you know, it's crazy. Because that's not that's not how it's designed to happen, and it, it's really not good for for the country or for any community. But, uh, I guess I guess there's some. Oh, I know there's one thing I wanted to mention to you last week. Maybe we could get some of the engineers, like from uh, Penn Tech or you know some of the schools and the scientists, together to work on some uh, some of these engines that were supposedly scrapped. You know, for gas saving and stuff, and come up with something, and maybe reproduce a hydrogen engine that supposedly was was squashed. Um, you know, I don't know. You know, something like that. Okay, thank you, Tom. All right, thanks. Have a great day. Anyone else? Okay, anyone online? I don't see anyone. Just okay. Jacob's talking says first. That's all. Jacob Stalker says. Okay. That's his public comment. Um, and then Jacob, he's a fine young man. Well, he's here first. Yeah, and uh, good to hear from you, Jacob. Didn't want to leave him out. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's nice to hear from you. Good, good, good young man. Um, so we've completed our agenda, and uh, we will meet again uh, on next week, July, or excuse me, June 30th, last day of June.
We'll see you at 10 a.m. Thank you. Yeah, we got to get over the tour of the center. Yeah. You know, look on the calendar, look at